What I wanted was to see him as a human in order to let go of all this anger that I felt. Um, and I felt I couldn't forgive him unless I met the human, because that's the only way you can kind of generate any type of okay. compassion. To humanise him, to, to, hu to enable the forgiveness. To humanise him. Also for him to see that I was a human, um, that was also critical for me. And um, to, to get question, answers to the questions that I'd had for so many years. You mentioned Dr. Mary Keane, and she's here with us tonight, and you're very welcome, uh, Mary. Uh, the uh, restorative justice area is quite new in this country. I think it's uh, 2009 it started off. Is it proving to be useful, successful, and helpful, uh, it, generally speaking? And what do you see as the most useful outcome for people like Alba from these encounters? It's been in this country for since 2009, but more, more recently we've been trying to develop it in relation to serious crime. Okay. Up to now it's been for uh, lower tariff offences, if yes. you like. So what happens, as Alva has described, for people like in Alva's situation, the outcomes are really, really good. The most important thing that we know is that it reduces post-traumatic stress and it reduces fear. How? By the person in Alva's situation actually facing their fear and facing the person who has done this to them. Yeah. What we find is increasingly that that fear just dissipates yeah. because they have eyeballed the person right down the table it, it, and post-traumatic stress is also known to, to dissipate. It's kind of like facing the bogeyman. I mean, it is. I mean, my fear just evaporated the minute right? I went into the room. Yeah, because he was just a man, just a person. How are you nowadays? I'm really good. Are you happy? Really good. Yeah, I mean, I am happy. I am. Um, I, I have to say it has been absolutely and utterly transformative for me. Um,